But these are the drafts. There's not much to go over in the drafts. I think the only thing that was like threatening here by Damon was um, the fact that Renekton can flex mid, Talia can flex jungle, and Maokai can flex top. And then they can also have Renekton top, Talia mid, Maokai jungle. So they had a couple of flexes going on, which made their last pick a bit more complicated. So they last picked Orn actually here. Rel was on four. I think good drafts by both sides. The reason they take Renekton here blind was because 369 had last pick, and 369 is a very big uh, Renekton enjoyer. And I think no matter what Nugri blind picked here, like Camille or anything, or Jax, uh, whatever they may be, or they're both banned. But anyway, you know what I mean? If they ban pick uh, Gnar, Kennen, he's going to pick Renekton. So they just denied it. Yo! Subscribe! Enjoy the video. So I thought Canyon would gank mid here. I thought he had a really good option here to just run mid and gank. Because what he did was, he was on bot side and enemy jungle ran straight past him, but he wanted crab. But Kanavi has a ward here, and they are, I guess they presume he's top side then. Look at this. I thought he, here he could gank mid looking at the zero positioning. He could just run mid and flash W and combo with Talia. But he doesn't do it for some reason. I guess he he's tunnel vision on the crab, right? But he could gank mid, go top side. Like, I feel like there's... Maybe I'm overthinking this, but if he ran mid here... Went onto Azir, got his flash or something, because this guy has no mana for combo. Took top crab and then threatened the top dive. Like, I think that would be pretty good, because his bot lane's already crashed the wave. Something like this could happen here. Instead, he just focused on bot crab really hard. Like, this Azir, the way he was running, this was a free kill. If you imagine he was running up now, or up, 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 my mouse is, my mouse is Maokai, and now he's here. Shomaker just runs forwards, I think that's an Azir flash, and then you can help him push out and go top or something. Like, he even face checks the bush, like, he, Yagao is convinced his jungler's bot side. It's only now he realizes, wait a second, Canyon's bot side, huh? I think they had a lot of setup there that they just missed out on. Canyon did it really well, but they, he should not focus on the crab here, he should just focus on a kill. But, I mean, Canyon does get double crab for it, right? Which is good. Eventually, he does help him push out, goes towards top side, but I think he could have just gone, gone for mid play instead, fuck the crab. Actually, five head canyon. Really, five head canyon. He knew that Graves was recalling over the wall. Oh my god, it's so five head canyon. This was so smart by canyon, if you look at his vision. He eased the bush, sees Graves, and then he, he doesn't have vision on him now because they toggled the vision of all, right? He just assumed that Graves dashed over the wall, and because he's not showing here, because he doesn't have dash to go over the walls, that he's just recalling in this spot. And then so canyon just runs over, sweepers ran out. Vac hacks him, VAC, boom, check him PC, and then, yeah, I mean, Nimbus clo cloak on Maokai, <laughs> you're not getting anywhere, bro. Even though Damwon lost, they look really good, yeah, Damwon, Damwon, Damwon and JDG look pretty damn good. This was a very close game. I think Damwon looked like the best team in the LCK right now, and like, uh, I mean, maybe Gen G step up a bit more, but... So it's Armageddon in bot, but Yagao smurfs it really hard. Yagao just completely carried the fight. I think Canyon is going a bit too deep here. But he has Showmaker behind him, so he can get Y. So he just commits onto them. They call for Rel. Kellen is out of mana. But Yagao gets over the wall. Flash ults them. Gets Showmaker as well, and Kellen. And uh, yeah, turns into a disaster. I mean, Varus luckily snipes the Rel, so you get one. So it's three for one. But Yagao plays this uh, really well. I'm surprised Nuggery doesn't build Blade in this matchup, but I mean, Gore Drinker is good against uh, against Orin Graves Kaisa. So Nuggery has perma top pressure. In this matchup, it's hard to like kill the Orin if you don't go Blade, but you can always have the push because Orin can't really walk up to the wave. Showmaker's trying his best to roam around and Yagao is matching it. JDG always have really good bot side vision. Like both ADs are 3-0. These teams are really evenly matched, I think. Very close game, you'll see. Missing does really well here. Like, this was a really, really good engage. JDG are always playing mid to bot. They're just leaving their Orn on a complete island. No point going top ever. Just get Kai'Sa ahead. Both ADs, kind of same gold. Drake's up in two minutes. There's so much to do here. They're just getting retaking bot side vision. This game's all about bot side. It's very common, I think, at Worlds. What you'll see is top matchups like Fiora Maokai, Fiora Orn, Camille Orn, Renekton Orn. Where there's tank on one side, carry on the other, and teams will play bot side all game and just let the tank do its thing. And the uh, carry will win in isolation, tank will be more useful in fights. It's happened very, very often. He ran, he does Drake with his team. Why does he run top? This is just weird by Nuguri. He should, he should take over bot, Doctam should take over mid, and, and Showmaker should take over top. I think that he's getting a bit griefed by his bot lane here. Unless, can, unless Canyon stay, like there's two things that happen here. Number one, Canyon stays and they try to like get this bot tier one or 
Uh, Varus goes mid, and Rennington takes over bot because he has TP for for Nash, right? Uh, for for Harold, in in that's spawning in like a minute or thirty seconds. So like Nuggery runs from bot to top. They have no vision top side, and he's just running there, like as if he owns the map. Uh, and now look at his bot lane. They just pushed in bot wave, and now what? They just join mid. Uh, it's really shit scenario. I think what happens happen is Showmaker bases, Varus catches bot, uh, Varus catches mid, and Rennington catches bot, and then they can retake top side slowly. And then Rennington can TP, and then he keeps matching Orn. Because Rennington just lost his whole lead in lane now. And now his team's getting TP'd on. This team fight is bonkers, actually. This is a 4v5. As well. It's missing. Not going to be able to find his way in here once again. Oh. Goal the Forge God. But it's going to be a great old out from Kellen as well. As Showmaker's reposition was good. Oh, yeah, Gao played that really well. So it's really good what Showmaker does because Kanavi would get out here. So he's queuing right here. You see his flash to the left to reposition just to hit him over the wall. Then 369 gets a good knockup. Canyon flashes out, knocks them back. Fight looks good for Damon, but yeah, Gao goes in. He goes in onto three, gets one. Maokai W's him. He flashes out with Maokai so he can peel and, or like bring him closer to, to Kaisa. Carries on hitting to kill Dogdam, dies for it, but then he trades it for Canyon at least. So it's really an awkward game because like JDG's comp scales better. They're playing Orn, Azir, Kaisa. It's really hard to play team fights against their scaling, and Rel is like pretty good engage, right? And Graves is just gonna power farm, build things like Black Cleaver or Dominant or Cyril Das and just be really fucking annoying. Uh, whereas Damon have a really good mid game. Like their mid game is good because of their lockdown. Their CC is insane. Varus ult, Talia WE, Maokai W ult, Renekton stun, Renata Q, Renata fucking ult. They have so much CC. Whereas JDG, like their 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 engage and CC is very progressive, right? Or an R1, R2, Azir shuffle in, Rail jump in, right? It's a lot more progressive rather than like individual lockdown. So that's why Damon's mid game is stronger because you don't actually have the defensive items to live through uh, that lockdown. In the mid game, whereas in the late game, like like when Malka W's you and you have Zonias or you have GA, like their their single target just kind of runs out. So the progressive fight just makes it stronger. They're looking for Canyon. He has no flash. I think he's fucked here. He's dead. Unless no, he's dead. That guy said there's so much damage. They could look to threaten Nash here or get mid tier one. I think mid tier one is the safer call, depending on where three six nine TPs or if he TPs. Well, JG don't have much risk on this Nash. Then I th I thought they would just go try and turn and burn it, but. Could backfire. They don't know Talia ult cooldown. Like Talia ult does a lot in these river fights. It really does. If you can, if you can just Talia ult directly on top of where everyone on the enemy team standing, just so they split, this really slows the fight down and makes it so they have to use. Like for example, if you can cut a zero off and he has the W E over the wall, then like this, and they have to use their mobility to get out. Then you can, yeah, boom. That was really good by by that one. Their mid wave contest with Talia ult there was really strong. Now they can get Nash. They should force Nash for sure. Their comp, comp is so mid game centric. How psycho is it if they hex gate? Is it sci too psychotic if they just all hex gate it? That's. Uh, uh, like, if the carries hex gate here and Nuggery engages with, and the canyon and flashes over, and then you have like a situation where you have like your carries here, Nuggery here, and canyon here. Does it work? I guess they will turn onto you, right? Uh, just, it just sucks because you st you get Nash, you steal Drake, but then you lose two people, so you lose all your tempo. Like, the carries would be up here right now. I don't know how much value that would give because they have, they have uh, sums up on their carries. I think they can make some work happen here. You just have to wait in base, I guess. Let them push out waves, scale a bit. Kai says 5-0. Okay, so this is the problem. This is like this is the problem of stealing the Drake. Like, look at the map. Enemy team has full top side vision. They're about to hit your top tier two. They have mid push. You you you've dropped two lanes of pressure and they only get one. So it's just like uh, it's so annoying when you're the ones with Baron for like two three minutes. Orn has no TP and Nuguri does, so they have TP advantage on the five v four if uh, JG engage because Orn had to go back and catch top after ulting and getting Kellen slash. They look like they're hovering for something. Damon are unsure of Orn position, but they see him top now. But there's not much to do here. Baron's off, they can't really take this tower and their souls in two minutes. Okay, this is Herald's fight, but JDG's there first. Oh my god, Yagao. Look at this guy, <laughs> he just x-gates in. Oh, they think they f they're gonna catch Nuggery or what? I failed this WQ. 
Okay, they flash onto Nuguri. Ah, he's dead. Ah, he fucked his E or what? They kill 369 though, right? So it's a one for one of tops. These teams are so close. But the problem is, look what they just used to kill 369. Varus flashes over, which is fine. But then what I see here is disgusting. This Varus Renato ult is hitting me. No joke. Like, that, that's... Oh my god, man. If they could just hit... If they hit anyone with that, they would probably kill them. Showmaker can rejoin the fight quick with his ult, but it's a 4v4 and they have no ults. And no flashes on uh, Dogtam Kellen. Uh, it's impossible to walk up. The Azir outranges them too hard. Also, missing really smart here. Look what he does. He just stands there. He knows he'll flash in. So he's pre wing the flash. You see that? Missing's really intelligent here. He knows the only way they can lose this is if he flashes in. So he's already wing where he thinks Maokai will flash for the back, for the, the Drake. So the second he lands, he's getting knocked up into stun. Yeah, I mean, all JDG do have to do now is just keep mid and bot push, they go STP. They like do a semi 1 3 1 because uh, Damon are showing on mid, so Yagao is fine to push out top, so they can get this top tier 2. This is an awkward part of Nash, when both side tier 2s are up, but mid tier 2 isn't, because rotating between those lanes is quite difficult, right? If, if mid and bot tier 2 are up, you can just go mid to bot, or bot to mid, but if it's both side tier 2s which are up, it becomes a bit annoying, because all you need to do is keep mid push, and you have to get them one by one, you can't go from bot to top right, or top to bot, it's impossible. So Orin is ulting here to threaten Damwon because their carries have no flash. Not for kills, but for tower. So Canyon ults back to say that if you threaten the tower, we will fight you under it. So they both trade ults to back away. They need to try and find a way to stop JDG from denying this from them. All right, Searing Charge going to be there, but 369... Oh, Varus ult missed again. It was only Malka ult that hit. Oh. Kanavi just destroyed them, man. Are you kidding? Like, they're like five versus three screaming, Graves, 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 Graves. And this guy just ults before he gets stunned. Watch their HP bar. And then Canyon gets hit, taken down. Kaisa auto has attacked Varus and then ults through him so he can hit Showmaker too. Holy fuck. And then Nugri is absolutely useless. And his carries are dead. Smurfing, smurfing, smurfing. Alright, that game was great. And it's so fucking nice that that's the only... That, dude, that was just the best of one. Can you imagine Damwon versus JDG quarterfinals, semifinals? Alright, so in draft, they go Aatrox first pick. I think that was a mistake by T1. They should not give Aatrox first pick. Uh, they double ban Razork, which... I get it. It's also a hilly pick, the Maokai. The Maokai I'm a fan of. I'm not a huge fan of the Sejuani band because I think you can just play Trundle, worst case. And it's also Sejuani on blue side, so it's not that OP. Um, also, you can play like Lee Sin into it as well. I, I don't think owners should care too much about Sejuani. It's not like they're going to play Renekton and Sejuani or anything, is it? It's just, I mean, not a huge deal. Um, they, got, they got really fucked, I think, here, T1, by picking Thresh on 3. Because the value you get from Thresh on 3 is so minimal. Like, they can play Nautilus lanes, they can play Blitzcrank lanes, Lucian Nami is fine. They can play, like, anything to get the push if they want. I think they needed to pick Jungle on 3. They really needed to pick Jungle on 3 because, I mean, yeah, like, Trundle would be ideal on 3 here, right? Hecarim, I'm not sure, sure about Hecarim. Because now you're in this awkward situation where you can't pick Vi. So, yeah, Jungle pick just gets really awkward because Poppy is really good into Vi, Jarvan, Lee Sin. So the only champ you have here is Viego. Like, there's nothing else, because you can't play an AP jungler. With Akali, you can't play, like, a, a fucking Akali Kartus or something like that. It's just dog shit. And Viego is not... The value of Viego is not that not that high. I think they just need a Trundle on 3 IMO. Because Aphelios... I think you can play Aphelios Thresh. You can play Aphelios Tam. You can play Aphelios Leona Nort. You can play Aphelios Lulu Karma, worst case. Like... I think they are fine. And also, it just gives you more value, right? Because if you pick jungle on 3, right? Let's say this is Trundle. Then you pick top on 4, whatever Zeus wants. Let's say Jax or whatever Orn or whatever the fuck. Then you can counter pick support and actually get a bit more value out of bot lane. Because right now, you're blinding mid, blinding AD, blinding support, weak jungle pick, and then you're counter picking top. So I think the value of the draft is just not all there for T1. Belveth would be... Uh, Skarner, I think Skarner would be a good pick. The problem with 
Because the way Skarner works into Poppy, the interaction, it's a lot common, more common than you think, like the ult into ult, right? You can pull them even further back. Skarner Thresh is good. What other jungle champs are there? Uh, Graves would be okay. That uh, sounds funny, but you just never press E when you're fighting Poppy. I mean, Wunder did really well in the lane. Like, he was actually winning against Zeus. He was just getting fucking 3 men on every other wave. This is just so awkward. This Poppy pick just won Fnatic the draft. It really did. I think Poppy is so OP. Especially when teams are early rotating Silas Akali, counter picking top with Fiora Jax, early rotating Graves, like... Poppy is so much value. Look how much value she gets in this game. Jax Q, Viego W, Akali E and R, uh, Lantern, like, it's so much... How much value this, this champ's getting in, in these games. So Razork's pathing here was just, uh, I didn't, I mean, I'm sure he has logic to it. I don't really get it. I guess he's early pathing top in case, I mean, maybe this is just a good poppy clear. And it basically leaves red buff up for longer so that when you get red, you have it for longer, right? And Viego's will fall off by the time you pick up your red. So you actually win 1v1, I guess, something like that. But I guess it gives owner the option to invade. Owner's invade here was a bit flip because uh, enemy team has pot push and mid push and poppy could have already taken her red. So he's like flipping it a bit here. Because all he saw was she started Raptors, but maybe he knew that this is Razork's poppy pathing from scouting. I think what Owner should have done here actually is if he had the push in lanes, he should go on red, right? If he doesn't have the push in lanes, which he doesn't, I think he should run around here and do Krux. I actually think he should just do Krux. This is very common thing that like uh, LCK junglers do, Canyon does it a lot. When you're on your red buff and he's in your jungle, he just takes your Canyon. So then by the time you come around here, he just runs out and he's just yoinked your camp and he takes Crab as well. I think he was thinking about it because he just pinged on the way to Krux, but then he went back to red. I think he, he could have got a lot if he just took Krux. So T1 bot lane. The reason Keria goes in is because he wants to stop enemy bot lane from collapsing on Owner. I think Owner got surprised with the amount of damage they had here. But that was two huge kills for, for Fnatic. This was massive for, for their bot lane. Doesn't make the game lost, I think, but like this just puts the Lucian army in such a good spot. Also, upset this tournament has been fucking insane. Upset and Humanoid have been like, if you, I'm sure if you look statistically or just like over the course of the tournament in the first few days of Worlds, these two are probably like the best performing carries next to, uh, next to players like Yagao and, um, and Knight and stuff. They're, they're, they're playing so well. It's crazy. Uh, T1's comp is pretty hard to play if they can't <coughs> skirmish around objectives. Needs like an Akali, I mean Akali Thresh Jax. It's like a, they're drafting similar to the way NA drafts in a way, right? Just single target damage, little engage, side lane pressure. I think Wunder's doing really well in his lane. He called Razor Cup once when he got a really good trade that like threatened a dive when Zeus had no TP. So he actually got a pretty good lead. I think this sequence was a bit odd by, f no, it was fine actually. It just, I was a bit confused why Wunder just ran all the way to bot. I guess he was just helping his mid keep mid push so he could hover around before going to bot. So now T1 tried to cross map onto Wunder, but I think Wunder is, um, Wunder plays this actually really well. So what he does is he knows he's getting dove. So what he does is he just trades really hard onto Zeus and like hits him when he tries to go for creeps and holds the wave here so Owner can't walk in. Otherwise, he's tanking tower straight away. So he just fights Zeus knowing that Owner's behind him. Look, he will never let the wave crash ever. So it's just smart. I mean, you'll see this in top lane a lot. In this case, on the other side of the map in bot. Like top laner's holding the wave so it doesn't crash. So the jungler has to tank from the get-go. Makes the dive a lot harder for jungle. Good pressure top. <clears throat> Upset, I think, here. Made just a small mistake. Missed, uh, I think he Q to the creeps and thought he dropped tower range. I think if he drops tower range here and doesn't get hit, which I don't think he will, then he's doing really good. But he gets hit by tower twice here, which just stings. Uma can't walk up, otherwise they get dove. So now they try to dive bot. TP seemed a bit early because T1 don't have ignite. I feel like Aatrox is just going to live here no matter what. They can't dive him no matter what. Like, if they commit into his Q3 here, they're both dead. So I, I can get why Humanoid TP'd. Maybe they can, he thought he could get more, but uh, it's better with safe than sorry. I think he could have stayed mid. Got mid, uh, got top tier one. Now they're matching lanes. It's good. I mean, Jax recovered a bit from this. With all this, like, owner hovering around. Wonder lost a few creeps. I think he's still up in XP, but he, I think Zeus was a lot further behind than he... It's a lot more even, basically. This just sucks. Because Wonder is permanently under dive pressure. Like, you see Faker's hovering already. It's kind of annoying for him. This dive from Zeus was a bit overforced. I mean, if he kept going here, he would just die. I mean, the trade flashes, it's fine. Wonder has to base the TP. 
you want to keep looking through river, but the only way they can actually get onto upset or Hilly is like if a hook hits, but upset and Hilly are playing good enough that they won't let them hit a hook or like a, a field assault. Wave top is insane. I saw that on the cast and I was like, holy fuck, Wunder is freezing like a madman. Ah, uh, this solution damage is crazy. I mean, look at their items. They're playing Gale Force Mandate at 13 minutes. Just dash, auto, auto, Q. Oh, the damage is nuts. Wonder dies, sucks. I think he took a bad trade, then checked for jungle and died on a face check. Happens. I mean, he's, it's a really frustrating game for Wonder. I mean, it's understandable though, because they're playing for Lucian Nami all game and they're covering owner. So there will be cross maps top. And I mean, this is like the fourth time he's been under threat of a dive or like a, a gank. I think he's trying to hold the wave here to stop it from crashing. So Zeus does actually a really good job to hide out of vision so that when he's holding it, he can jump on him. But Wonder can't trade back enough. Uh, that's is it Sundra Jax? He does so much damage. Even if he even if he wards that bush, he's gonna have to give up the wave or die anyway, so because he has no flash owner would just kill him. This was really good ult by Hilly. Didn't have to flash, upset was there, but it's whatever. Yeah, Winner gets caught again. I think this was avoidable, but I think what he's doing here is his team is playing really heavy bot and he knows they're coming topside. I don't think Wonder's stupid. You're right, thanks to Prime. Wonder's not stupid, he knows they're coming top. He's just, just trying to take away the blue before they get towards top, just to like maximize um, gold, right? Just trying to take away blue. So that when they come into this top jungle, there's no camps. And he'll just wait and catch the wave. Good news is Thresh gets the kill. So it could have stung a bit more if Jax got it or Diego, but it's whatever. And um, I think Azir catches top wave here. And I get Drake because we're all top. I think the best thing is like, Wonder has died twice, but neither of it went to... Um, neither of it went to the Jax. Humanoid kills Zeus, who's trying to contest Herald. This was really good. Upset wastes his flash here, but it's okay. Maybe if he had blue orb up, he could kill. Good wave control by Fnatic here. Just holding waves because there's no objective. I mean, I think he'll have to push out eventually because there's a contest on bot and he has to be ready to TP. Had uh, so much mid push here that T1 can't commit because Lucian Nami comes down and kills some Humanoid TPs. It's five members already. This was just really good chains, you see. W's the, the Viego W, stuns him into the wall. Wonder at Q1, W, Q2, auto, kills him. And it's a 5v4, humanoid TPs. Faker kills upset. I mean, Faker plays the fight well here. I mean, look at the damage just upset. Auto Q ult, one shot. I think Faker tried to E onto his shroud here. But it's, I don't know if it connected onto the Shroud, because then he could dash back, right? But I think he just missed it. This Herald got so much value, because it's going top when Drake's up. This Wunder TP, not the best, but it's okay. I think what would have been ideal for Wunder is running top and pushing top, perhaps. Because his team will have mid-push, right? And T1 needs to base after mid-tower. I think the ideal thing for Wunder there is running from base to top, clearing out top wave and Herald, and then TPing to, to Drake. And then matching Zeus TP if they try to flank them on mid or something, right? That would be, like, ideal. I think the TP made it so the Herald fucked their base a bit. Because Wunder has to group for Drake. So Faker here. Razork plays this really well. He should not dive in here, Faker. It's crazy. He has no W. Just gets stunned, even out of the Lucian Q. Upset has the damage to kill. And then Wunder dies. It's a 4v4. Humanoid gets out though, which is really important. It was really close to him not getting out. I think Fnatic kite back just enough. So what Humanoid does here is he Ws, Qs the W away, and then E's. Then he gets out. And then I think there's an overcommit here onto the poppy by Zeus. Really good bubble to stop owner. Then they get one for one. Then Fnatic finish Nash. And by the time they finish, Faker wants to go in because they have to take the fight. This is very common, right? You can't let them get Nash and get out. So they have to take this fight. So Faker does a lot to Hilly. But Humanoid repositions onto Zeus, pushes him back on top of Faker. And then Razork stuns Faker. So now Fnatic are clumped up as four, playing front to back with an Aatrox and a Poppy in front of them, rather than being stuck in the pit. I think that's really good by Fnatic. Like, Humanoid just thinks quickly about what to do, right? Doesn't want to just sit here with his team while they're getting fucked from both sides. It's good to just toss the jacks in, Razork repositions, and you just sit four men here. And now it's really hard for T1 because you have no threat of a flank and their backline is not exposed. So yeah, you're playing front to back against Azir, Lucian, Nami. Why did Carrier flash in there? I think Carrier thinks that they have to turn, otherwise they're going to get chased down. 
which makes sense. I mean, they have a lot of mobility, right? Like, I think if Caria doesn't flash in and call for a turn, then what will happen is Fnatic will chase him down. This is the thing. Right, right here, Lucian W, speed up, Poppy, Aatrox, speed. Like, they're going to get on top of them with flashes, right? So upset flashes forwards, and Caria sees it and says, okay, this is our only chance to win the fight. The fight, we have to we have to turn here. Go on, go on Lucian, he has no flash. So he flays him into his team and says, like, we need some follow-up here to have even a chance to win. But, he, I mean, they don't have the damage. Upset can kite it. So Fnatic tried to end here, and I, I understand the call. They have no wave clear, they have Baron, and they have more range. And they can just kind of like dash in, culling, Azir poke, level 16. They have disengage as well, Akali no W, and this wave's coming in already. Can pop yield them too. Baltier 2 is gone, they just group up. It's good. They can poke them on the tower really hard, as long as they're checking their flanks. Culling can just force them back, Nami ult can force them back, Poppy ult can force them back. They have so many good spells to just like channel or threaten. And then Zeus tries to find the flank and I can see it, like they're gonna lose their mid inhib. Top wave's coming in, they have one Nexus tower, you just have to go in, it's the only thing you can do right now. Like the game is lost, maybe like the call here is just Zeus jumps in, Aphelios ult, Faker can somehow gap close and then maybe they can one shot upset. Um, respectable attempt. But yeah, cleanse, dash out, ult misses, and then culling. So yeah, good turn by a good good reaction by upset. He even has flash still. Melt Zeus. Triple kill for Lucian. Oh, it's nuts, huh? I mean, this this series, like, <laughs> why do they pick Nidalee, man? You know, I think the reason they didn't pick Fiddlesticks, which would have been pretty dankies here, is because of Silas, right? I think Karthus is their best bet, you know? I mean, they could have also just put Maokai jungle with Set and picked Kennen, I guess, but I don't know how good that is, Maokai Set. So Inspired gets Krugs. It's like, it's not bad. It's one camp, but... Oh, I don't know, he's playing... And he goes Conquer in Italy because of four melees, right? But the best way for EG to play the game is uh, just ganking, or like, it sounds stupid to just say just gank, but... Like, pressuring mid as much as possible, so Jojo can just blow waves and move to sides with the Nidalee. And they can, like, walk into Yankos' jungle and fight him a bit on his Grump and his Raptors and shit like this. But they have really good setup in mid, just Nidalee can just... I mean, it's, it's, it sounds maybe a bit too one-dimensional, but I, I just... I think Caps is always going to get hit by Seti because he has to farm the melees, right? And then you can just pull him, spear, chunk him, whatever it may be, gank, uh, ult, anything. Like, anything in mid, just to make sure the Silas is stuck under his tower and then do this. This is the best way for them to win. Oh god, this draft is just so hard to play, isn't it? I mean, if you're an LPL team, it's maybe good because the LPL teams just run at you in your jungle on cooldown. Also think they could maybe... Am I delusional in thinking this? I'm gonna go back to where we were in a second, but... Could they level 1 invade bot? I don't know how good that would be. Like, their level 1 seems broken. At least that makes it so you can play a bit faster paced. I think they can level 1 invade bot. Nidalee is really strong level 1 with Conqueror. Against their champs with Tom Kench too. I think they should level one invade bot. They have set as well, like just walk into their bot side. They even G2 even watered for it. You could like do uh blue gromp, cross through mid, into his top side, full clear from top to bot, three jungle quadrants, and then start stacking Drakes through bot and mid. Uh, something like this. I think you should level one invade. And then G2 are first to the play with Silas doing it to set when set should be doing this to Silas. I think maybe when you ult set on set, you land behind them, right? Yeah, it's hard. Maybe he could have, like, ran up, ulted Yankos, and then flashed or something. I think that's the only way you can live here, but insta-flashing, you're dead. Ah, it's hard to live, hard to live. And now Sejuani is 6, so... Like, she's actually pretty strong. She's the same level as Nidalee. I mean, they lose their blue, but who the fuck cares? They need to do more, they need to do way more of this, but it's so hard to find windows. And they just go through bot, like the, the windows that Caps found here. Look at the vision, they have bot, they have a ward on the entrance that Yankos just avoided, so they don't see Yankos right now. They don't see Caps, but he went through their jungle because their entrance is not warded. Now they see Sejuani, but Caps is already here, so they get both flashes. And then they just redive on a stack, or on a fast push, it's like... Jojo's just hitting mid tower, Inspire's on Herald. So this is the Drake start, but yeah, they lose 5v5, uh, 4v4 is really hard, like... And then, they, uh, yeah, they disengage bot. I mean, pff, uh, EG's not got much team play going on.
G2 don't do the Drake. Yankos just bases to defend his top camps. I think it's... Uh, it's probably a good play to just leave Drake up. Because otherwise, look where Nidalee is. If he finished Drake right now, he would lose his red and his crux. So what Yankos does is he drops Dragon because he knows they win 4v4 anyway. So if they go to Drake, he defends his top camps, then clears down to bot and then contests Drake again in the next 30 seconds. I mean, Sergio Aniolt will come back up. So this just basically means that he doesn't lose to um, the Nidalee. They do a good a good job of defending their bot camps. I mean, they just do. Jankos is just Jankos is just a really good jungler. He knows how to defend his camps against Nidalee. He lost one blue, and a Krugs camp, even though he got a crab for it, so it's fine. You're two k down with set Nidalee. <laughs> like, how how can you win? And your Varus has a shield bow. I'm surprised Broken Blade and, and and Impact is this even. I thought Broken Blade would destroy him a bit harder in isolation, but it's not the end of the world because they're both sides winning. Mid prior contest, both bot lanes mid, 1-3-1, one, one. yeah, it's good. I mean, G2 don't have TP, so Caps has to hover when Herald's up. It's fine, though, because you can you can just fast push bot to run mid. And then they win 4v4 again, and they should win 5v5. I mean, 5v5 is a little bit harder because Maokai is stronger than Fiora in 5v5s, and it just gives them more frontline, but Caps can take Maokai ult, and it's just really, really strong. Or Varus ult, both are good. So Jojo TP's in here. This fight looked good for EG initially, but I wonder if... EG should just play it slower and just keep poking, but I mean, Yankos does get poked a little bit here. I think he gets hit by a spear in a second. Like there, he breaks his passive. And the ult onto Jojo is not great at the start. I mean, it is because it starts the fight so they don't get poked out, but it's not the best target. But they use Eat, and I think Cap sees it, they use Eat. So Yankos dies, and people are getting rooted, and Target Mask looks like he's gonna die. But he has a good red ult, and then Flakit can just free hit. And they have no set W. Broken Blade gets his heal off, everyone gets regen, and then they have mobility to go forwards. I don't know if the eat was worth it onto your front line, but it is what it is. Yeah, the Nidalee value is not that high. If they had something like a Lilia or a Carthus or a Fiddle, then maybe this fight was insane as well. Because if you just... I don't want to backseat too hard their drafts, but... If you just imagine Nidalee's position right now, it's just a different champ, like a Carthus or a Fiddle or anything. You could just actually do something in this fight, like Fiddlesticks ult over this Herald. I know the game would look a lot different, right? But just on principle. Set is good into Silas. It's a good matchup. You can push him in early. But the set can also leverage your jungler to have time to farm. Rather than being forced to have to play for invades, you can get your Cartus, like... Or your Lilia or your Fiddle in a good state. You can use your push for their benefit. Yeah, this was the fight mid, but yeah, Inspired can't jump in. Maybe it's worth for Inspired to jump in and kill Caps, but because he hits Spear, he actually can uh, flash W him and kill him, and he will take his much. I think the reason it, I think it's really worth it for him to just for him to just jump in and take Caps' uh, Mage eyes off. Yeah, he can't dash in because as Nidalee jumps, he would get rooted. I think maybe he can get his Q off though. It's worth the fucking risk. May as well. The game's fucking lost. So Caps kind of gets caught here. This is like EG's last hope, killing Caps. I think Jojo's TP, I ooh, I don't think Jojo needs a TP there to cut him off because Caps can't go that way anyway. So Jojo kind of dies. Oh, the Rel Q there from Target Mask is really good. I mean, Target Mask is just hold, holding his Q the whole fight. He Ws, Target Mask insta -Qs it, takes it off. Tom Kench is trying to join his team so that he can eat Jojo. And he manages to get there in time, but again, you're eating the set. Kaori is joining the fight now. And Jojo staying in the belly as long as possible. Gets spit out on the back left. Flakid guns are not great, but he has chakrams at least on his ult. And uh, yeah, I mean, look at the health, health bars, right? It's it's only like Maokai virus versus everyone with Nidalee Spears. I mean, Vol Kaori does have heal. He could have used heal on anyone right now. Why doesn't Kaori just heal while they're fighting? So he can just step up and hit. I think they have to just fight. It's the only way they win. Just heal Jojo or something. Just heal someone and just fight. Vulcan, anyone? Uh, there's no way they win this fight anyway. It's super lost. Uh, Inspired fucked up his... Because Fiora W'd there and she got hit by a spear, but Inspired fucks up his Flash W. He's not in range. 
Okay, this game's over. We're gonna go to Rogue DRX now. I thought that... I mean, this ward from Barrel over the pit was really smart. I actually think the teams could do that ward more against early game junglers like Trundle. Spots late invades a little bit. Spots level 2 ganks. Spots jungle. So they have pressure in all three lanes. Well, pressure in two lanes. Bot is contested, but they should have pressure in bot when they have sustain. Odo played like a god this game. Yeah, Odo Amne has always been really good at Maokai and Rumble. These two champs, if they're in meta, it's Odo's fucking... Odo's playground. This bubble was crazy. Death didn't think he needed to flash it. Also, comp. Props to comp. That sidestep was fucking dirty. Dashes forwards. Cancels his auto because Beryl thinks he's going to stand there and hit. Dodges to the side, then autos, and then follows the flash so he didn't have to cleanse. Like, that was nasty by comp. Honestly, that was nasty. This was really good play by DRX. Lane gank on Tanami. Death really couldn't do much this game. He ults for bot wave so they can get this Drake first, which is good. But on the next Herald and stuff like this, he's never really involved. Gold is pretty even because of CS differences, right? Jungle mid AD. Even support. Herald mid for plates for Akali. It's good. Zekka's doing pretty well in his lane phase, I think, to be even against Azir. Now oh, this dive was just so scuffed. King just missed his ult. Maybe they could one-shot Malrang there if they chain CC'd him, but... I think he just waits for Amumu to go first. Amumu can go first, and then Sejuani can hit ult after. I don't know if he dies, actually. I think he has Mercs and Legend Tenesti, and, and then he will easily be able to get a stopwatch off. He also didn't ult, he just insta stopwatch, it was really good. This is the Herald fight that I'm just... I feel like DRX fucked their setup for. Because Deft is around mid after bot wave, and he could full commit for Herald, but then he will lose his bot tower to Odo, who has TP, and it's a 5v5 anyway. But the problem is, DRX don't have any TPs. When did they use their double TP? Oh, you can't see it because of the replay. But they, ba they basically... I think King and TP's top from Death. My guess. And then Zekka just TP'd mid to catch midwave. Where I think Def should run mid here and catch midwave. And maybe Zekka should go bot or something if they want to fight this Herald. Because his lane assignments suck because they lose a bot tower no matter what. If Def leaves bot here, his tower is dead. And if he doesn't leave, then it's a it's a 5v5 anyway. So DRX should just drop this, I guess. And just try to play it. But you can't dive this Maokai. Oh, it's just a really good, really good setup from Rogue. I mean, maybe they just set up for Drake. So then they do decide to take the fight. But MF's not here. It's just a 4v4 with a TP. So Barrel goes in, it's support for support. Odo's here first, so it's a 4v3. Then Zekka's kind of out of gas, because he R2's out. And now it's just Deft on a turn, but he has no he has no CC on his ult. So everyone just gets out of his ult. And then Rogue get the Herald anyway. So, I mean, yeah, one for one and Rogue get the Herald. So it's a win-win for Rogue. You either get the Herald or bot tier one. And they got the Herald, so it was really good. At least this, I think this is the best option that DRX could have had, right? Stop bot tier 1 from dying. They get Herald, but you also get their TP and you get 1 for 1. So I think that's probably one of the best outcomes they could have got. So Rogue only want to cover top. It's the same situation as they had mid in the early game, right? Just cover mid as much as possible. Now they're covering top. And I think Comp and Trimby will always get mid push if Malrang hovers. And they can move top on every wave. Or like hover top on every wave. Put Vision down. They have Herald though. So they're going to group mid from bottom top to mid to Herald. It's good. MF could ult the wave here, but... Yeah, the pillar just fucks her really hard. Actually, you know what I prefer here from Rogue, to be honest? I don't know if this is better. But I think they should shift top and Malka should just take over mid and they should herald top because... DRX can match really easily. It might be worth to just crack open top because then Azir is safer when you're covering sides, right? Because he can just push top wave and it goes to tier 2. Uh, and then he can just be a bit more self-sufficient. Maybe cracking top tower is better. Because they will get top tower. It just stops the Akali Lee from having pressure. I think getting a little bit of this mid tower versus getting top tower because now Azir is dropping waves, he has to catch, you lose tempo top. In this case, you would have already taken mid uh, top tower. Could be a bit better, but in the end they get this play right, so it's hindsight's a, a wonderful thing. Odo does really good here not to leave the bush, because he, but what Odo does here from mechanic wise is he runs upwards. You see when he TPs, he doesn't run at Akali, he runs up, because when he runs at Akali, Akali will get vision. And when Akali gets vision, Akali will just R1 through him, W, E backwards, and then R2 out. So that's her escape route. So instead, Odo runs up, doesn't give vision for Akali, so he can't see him. And then by the time Akali does see him, Odo sees him first with the sapling, and then he W's him. And then he stays up towards top. So now Akali doesn't have an angle to go through with R1. And then by the time she gets a position to R1 over the trundle to go in the direction that she wants to go, 
which is right now, Larson pushes it. So I think Rogue actually played this pretty well to stop Akali from being able to escape. They get the kill. It's one for one. Larson dies, but... Trimby has to flash there, otherwise Lee and Q connects, and then they kill Barrel. So it's two for one. Really good TP play by Rogue. Zeka TP's bot here. Tier one. Drake fight inbound. Barrel position is great here. Barrel position here. Three man ult. So I see why Yuhan kicks. I can see it. Because from a Lee Sin perspective, that's a three man knockup. If he kicks here, he could three man knockup. The problem is he's kicking the Nami out of the, the MF ult. So what happens is Trimby gets knocked back here. And then he is out of the MF ult range, so he actually lives, even though Trimby had no flash, so he probably would die there. I think what the best option here for Yuhan is, is, oh my god, if he if Yuhan hits this Q, the fight is won. If this Q hits, and then this ult hits, he could just Q, W, R flash this, this fucking uh, Azir. Odo does so much work in this fight as well. Hey, it's just so unkillable. Oh yeah, Lisa doesn't have flasher, right? I mean, he could probably find one of the carries, maybe. I can understand why he's dashing forwards here. He, he thinks he has a free kill on the barrel, and I think he can get his flash here, because he has cleanse, so there's no threat. But now... He dash cleanses away, or Gale Force cleanses away, but then there's so much follow-up that he dies. Trimby dies, Malrang flashes, and now they have 5v3 over Nash. Uh, 4, 5 v, uh, 4v3 over Nash, but they don't have MF ult, or Sejuani ult. So DRX play for the fight. But it takes so long to get Larson down. There's so many minute things that could fuck them really hard here. If this Lee and Q hit, then there's the engage, right? He's just gonna Q the trundle. And then look for a kick somewhere. And they'll try to start turning. But it takes so long to turn. King gets jabated by Larson there. There it is, finally he gets this kick flash. But it's a bit late. I think they could have just played for finish maybe. What do you think about the finish there, if Kingen doesn't dash out? Just play for finish, Lee Sin cues it, Ward jumps over, kicks away Trundle, cues back while it's low. Doesn't look too bad. Oh, he doesn't have smite actually, this Lee Sin. Yeah, Lee Sin doesn't have smite, they have to turn. The turn is, it looks good, I mean, he gets a good kick. Larson pushes back, lives for a while, and then it's just... Sunderer, Trundle and, Trundle and Sunfire, Maokai just murdering Deft. Can't move. Look at Odo go! Look at him! My Sniffer! My Sniffer! That's kind of unlucky that the knockback didn't push him the right way. Now another dragon fight. I think Odo does really good in this dragon fight at marking Lee Sin Akali. Lee Sin perma chain CC'd. Comp does really good kiting here. This flash was great. Deft gets knocked up on his ult. And now he's marking Akali. And he's still full HP. Jesus, man. This Maokai is absolutely out of control. Kill Sejuani. Then they get Drake and Nash, I think, from this, right? So Otto ults to push them off the tower. Larson steps up. He just gets ticked by the... Q onto Malrang. Ult flash from, by Barrel. Ah, it's hard for Larson to live here, isn't it? There's not much he can do. By the time he gets his ult off... He's dead. Could Rogue have turned earlier in that fight? Uh, I don't think so. What's the... There's no real threat of a turn. Maokai ult is already used. Unless Odo is further forward, they have to dive then. Comp would also have to be further forward to hit the tower for them to actually be able to 5v5. XP-wise, DRX aren't that... that far down. I mean, XP-wise, the only level diff is top. It's just... And Deft is quite close to IE. The problem that DRX have is Rogue does a really good job here of marking Dragon. Dragon spawning in one minute. And it's almost like a line, right? Where there's several lines in the game of vision, right? DRX can contest this line, but they can't contest this line because they can't ever push out. And if they ever get past that line, then you have the next line, which is down here, kind of, and the next line, which is the entrance. So they can only really be around this area. And then when the wave comes in, DRX would be able to push the wave out and then step in here. But Rogue's just standing on this line here. And every time the wave comes in, they'll kill the wave right here. And wait for their wave to come in. The only way DRX I think could contest this is just dropping mid and going through bot here and then coming down here and trying to contest through this area. That's the only way they can try to contest this because Rogue's just marking mid really well. And you should, like, Dragon's up, right? When Dragon's spawning in 30 seconds, you don't just run to Dragon and stand there. 
you keep them in their base as long as possible. So that when it spawns, you can just turn and burn it. And poke them out. And have one person, like, marking them to stop them from being allowed to enter. Odo's gonna try to take blue. Give it to Larson. And then DRX can only really go through bot. Look what they see. They see Fuckle. So they waited for Deft's IE. 27 seconds on Drake. They do decide to go through bot, which is fine. But I don't think they get to Drake in time. This is the problem. It's really good. Then they get out. Then they do the same thing around Nash. They catch uh, King in on bot with Larson CP. Doesn't matter though, because Nash is spawning and they STP for it. But they'll do the exact same thing. They'll make it so there's lines again, right? Like, DRX can come through certain lines and Rogue will block them on every single entrance because it's each each of these lines has a bush that they'll play on. So when they take this mid hip, they'll go back. The rest of them will start it. And then DRX have to find their way through these lines, right? Mission number one, right? In a simple terms, they have to check this bush. Then they have to check this bush. Then they have to check this bush. Make sure they're not getting flanked. And then they can get to Nash. So what Odo will do is he'll fake... Pre this is why blue orbs are so important. Because if you blew it right now and you see four people here, then you can just run straight through everything. You don't have to care. But if you can't blue it, then you have to really pay attention to what bush they're in. Sweep, go together, don't split up. They could be turning. What, they're here, maybe they're here. They see fuck all of this. They just see Odo. They could all be in this bush right now. They, they, they have to be really cautious, right? So Odo is just pre fake pressuring. And then by the time Yuan realizes, it's gone. So this is the problem that they have, right? That's how Baron baits work. And that's how, um, I mean, they could have turned there on a bait, or they could have just finished. And Odo is the one that slows them down, and then Odo just does a massive Q here. It's crazy. Game is fun. I thought Comp would get a Penta here, actually. Alright, we already did JDG versus Damon. Nice. Yeah, Worlds was a banger.